Welcome to UCF Nightline, your source for UCF sports and former player information. All right, Night Nation, this is Andrew Fegley, and this week I am joined by Night Fan Stan. Night Fan, are you there? I am here at Night Fan Andrew. Every day is a great day to be a UCF Night. All right. Thank you very much for joining us. There's been a lot of people that have asked for you to, to come on this program and to, to talk to us. Um, I just want to say, first of all, this is episode number 20 for the Nightline podcast, so that's kind of a big deal to me anyway. Um, I've gotten through, we and and all of us have gotten through 20 of these things, so that's where we're at. Night fan, so tell us a little bit about yourself for those of the people that don't know you. I think everybody knows you, but uh, for those that don't, give us a little bit of background on yourself and let us know what you do. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm a real shy person. I don't get out much. <laughs> uh, I don't take constructive criticism really easy, and uh, I'm not uh, shy about cheering in front of 40,000 people. So what's your next question? <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> that's... Right, that, well, that's good. Actually, it was a blessing in disguise. I started uh, the KFS gig, if you will, out at Bright House Stadium in 2008-09. Uh, 2007 was the opening of Bright House Stadium, as we all know, versus Texas Longhorns. And what I started doing is just kind of knuckle-bumping people around my section. Really didn't uh, expand into the crowd or other sections. And then I thought, hey, man, you know, we need to get the, like the 12th man out here. We need a, a super fan, you know, in the stands. But, I, you know, I, I knew it was going to be a lot of work, and I was trying to not so much copy, but uh, model myself uh, um, with uh, Mr. Two Bits, as Paul, any Florida Gator fan would know. For 40 years, I think Mr. Two Bits actually cheered on the uh, Florida Gators, one bit, two bits, three bits, a dollar off to the Gator stand up and holler. But he had the whistle going on, and he really, I mean, he didn't, you know, he had some signs, but there wasn't really anything that, uh, you know, I didn't want to do the whistle. I just more or less wanted to do the knuckle bumps, high fives. And uh, I started out doing that, you know, discreetly, and all of a sudden when I broke out the signs, it just kind of took off, actually, and uh, the rest was history. But uh, it's, it's all fun. And I'm, ha- I'm having fun with it, and that's the most important thing. Absolutely. And what you do is awesome. It gets people pumped up, and you can always count on seeing Night Fan Stan at the games. You've been around the program for a long time. Have you ever seen anything like uh, what happened last uh, this Thursday night? Have you ever seen anything like that before? Uh, no, actually, uh, outside the uh, Doug Flutie, Hail Mary, uh, B.C. and Miami, and flew through the uh, Hail Mary. I was actually on my couch getting ready to, uh, you know, say, hey, you know, we're going to lose this game and contemplating on what bowl game we're going to go to. Uh, but the cardiac kids actually came back, and everyone went to sleep in the house. And with uh, 10 seconds left to go, I mean, I thought anything was possible. But when Holman threw that 10-yard uh, in-and-out sideline pass, I thought, okay, well, anything was possible. But I, I still didn't believe, you know, we were going to actually catch the ball. So... When we threw it, I thought, you know, all ECU has to do is just line up on the goal, maybe tip the ball, swat the ball down. I mean, that's what most defenses do. Uh, it didn't happen. And then they actually misjudged the ball, and Perryman caught the ball, you know, following through his pattern, and it ended up in his hands. That was kind of a, uh, a miracle, actually. It was absolutely a miracle. I, I, it's the same thing kind of happened here. I was ready to go to bed. I was just like, you know, oh, man. This is horrible. This is like the worst thing that could ever happen. And then all of a sudden, you know, he catches that ball. First of all, Holman made some great um, plays just getting there in the first place. The, right. You know, the game took a kind of a turn in the third quarter, and it wasn't quite what we wanted it to be, quite what it should have been. But, you know... We uh we got there in the end anyway. I was about to to call it a night as well. I would never turn it off, you know, early, but I was ready to go to sleep and kind of sulk and and you know all that stuff and ready to play Bowling Green or somebody like that in a bowl game. And then all, all of right. a sudden, you know, he throws this bomb as they're calling it down the, the sideline and and the thing came straight down. It looked like 
and it was just the most amazing catch. I screamed at the top of my lungs. I was jumping all over the place. My wife and her daughter thought that, you know, the house was on fire or something. They both got up and ran downstairs. What, what, you know, and I had to replay it and, and all that. So it was incredible. What a way to finish off a game. Um, if I haven't said it yet, UCF 32, East Carolina 30. I had talked with a couple of my members that are on the uh, on the Nightline podcast board. We have a message board as well on there, UCFNightlinePodcast.com. Please go to that and talk to us about everything football, basketball, and there, there's even an area in there to talk about whatever you want to talk about that's not sports related. But anyway, I was talking to somebody and they said, you know, what was your prediction? Because I don't think I gave the prediction last week. But I did say that I thought we would beat them by three. So I was only one point off. So we beat them by two points. You know, it is what it is. We we won. We're going to go to a, more of a, a decent bowl game, I think. We have a, a part of the American Championship, at least. I guess it's a, now it's three ways. It's uh, Cincinnati, us, and Memphis all have a little bit of the American Championship. But we are repeat American Championship two-time, you know, so... I think that that's kind of an issue that we need to get worked out. Obviously, it'll work out next year when we have Navy, but, right. you know. So, yeah. go ahead. Well, I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan of, you know, splitting conference co-champs. I know the Big 12 did it this year with, with Baylor. And, you know, three teams is a little bit much. Two teams is much. I was never a big fan of splitting national titles back in the day before the BCS started. You know, and that's why uh, Big 12 is in, the, in desperate need for a conference championship. Whether they keep it at 10 or expand to 12 is yet to be uh, determined. But, you know, co-champs, you know, played out on the field. You know, it's kind of like hokey, if you will, putting, you know, three T-shirts to say, hey, we're the AAC champions. And uh, my warped brain or train of thought, which is just an opinion, is that you can't take a title away from defending champs. Now, being the AAC, that it's really a young conference, we are defending champs. So in order to be conference champions, uh, you'd have to have a better record than the defending champions. And that was not the case in this situation. Right. So with uh, by default, UCF, UCF should be uh, declared uh, champions of the AAC. But we all know it, it doesn't work that way. It's just an opinion. But, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, it'll it'll pass, and you know, next year, like you said, when Navy comes in, there'll be a, a conference championship. I mean, heck, even the MAC, the MAC has a conference championship. Yeah. So, well, I wonder. You know, spe- speaking of that, with the Big Twelve situation, with I guess I haven't really talked about it yet, but I, I'm sure that all of you know this by now. Alabama, Oregon, Ohio State, and FSU are the ones that that got into the the four team playoff. That left out TCU and Baylor being the two closest ones that did not get in. That right. leaves, you know, the Big 12 as the the conference that got left out completely. And I believe that that is part to do with because they do not have a conference champion. Just right. like, you know, just like us, you know, we, multiple conference champions. You need to have one conference champion and then, you know, so... I'm assuming that the Big 12 probably needs to do a little bit of realignment, and there may be a space for UCF in there. What do you think about right. that? Well, you know, uh, Baylor fans will argue, uh, had Wisconsin, they didn't win, right? Wisconsin won that could have pushed Baylor, you know, into the top four. Um, the conference championship will happen next year, but probably not. Uh, maybe in 2016, 17, I could see them. You know, expanding, they could keep it at a 10 team, uh, league, which is a little selfish, I would think. I, I, I'm thinking that the other conferences would have to vote on that. Um, and, and there'd be more, you know, if they were splitting the money, you're only splitting the money amongst 10 teams versus the other power conferences have 12. And, you know, there's more, you know, money to go around. I, I think that you have to get other conferences to agree on that. Uh, the 12, Team, they could actually expand to four, couldn't they, as well? Yes. 
right. could they could be fourteen. Yeah. Right. It could be Memphis, Cincinnati, UCF, and USF. It could be UCF and Cincinnati. I don't, you know, I just read online that they might consider Memphis and Cincinnati. So I think this is kind of just talk right now. Of course, everyone wanted, wants to fire, including myself, you know, right away was, hey, they need a conference championship. And when when the, uh, the uh, selections came down, I was like, okay, Alabama, Oregon, Florida State, and then it was kind of like, you know, the lottery. It was kind of a funny feeling, you know, while Baylor gets in, you know, they're not going to expand the Big 12. But if Ohio State can jump them, man, that's something to look at. So, you know, right now it's all talk. I mean, my buddy UCF, Bob, who's a frequent guest on the Night Fan Stand Show, says uh, when he sees the Big 12 logo in the middle of the field at Bright House Stadium, then he'll believe it. <laughs> yeah, well... So, there's something to be said about that, and he's always a uh, realist. My buddy UCF Bob, I'm kind of more of a, you know, hoping, you know, I just kind of go with the flow, but it would be nice to see the Big 12 expand. Now, whether they choose UCF, I mean, it has yet to be determined, but I think it's a no-brainer. Being that we're in the uh, 19th TV market in the country, along with USF, I don't think Memphis is is there you know, as far as TV, but they do bring basketball, something that UCF is, is lacking currently. Right. You know, well, so Big 12 could look at, okay, they got Memphis, but maybe not football. So well, a lot's got to, you know, go down the pike right now. I think everybody was just jumping on the conclusion that, hey, the Big 12 needs to expand, you know, after Baylor and TCU got snubbed today. Right. There also has been a little bit of talk about um, the Big 10, you know, expanding as well also. So that could be interesting. Uh, they've, I believe they've got 12 now. That would make them 14 if they brought in two more teams. You know, I would go to either one of those. I don't really care. I just want us to get into one of these Power 5 conferences so we don't have to mess with this anymore. You know, not, not having a spot or not being able to play the teams that we need to on our schedule to have a spot like that. Did you well, hear... You know, the UCF fans... They or even myself included, I've come to the conclusion that invited is a very big key word. And we can hope, want. I remember when we were uh, being recruited by the Big East, and there was things like, hey, you see us going to the Big East. You see us going to the Big East with USA. And, you know, how did that work out? Like the conference ended up folding, although they kept it for basketball, but for football. So, you know, you have to just kind of go with the flow, and invited is the key word. I mean, you can hope, you can want, but in order to get into a Power 5 conference, you have to get invited. And until that day, you know, one can only hope. Right. Did you hear the uh, radio call, by chance, from Mark Daniels? Uh, Actually, I did. I was driving uh, to work and heard it on the Mike Bianchi show on 740. Yeah, I got. I have right. audio of that, and I'm going to play it here real quick for everybody, okay. if, cool. just for those who didn't hear it. All right, so hang on for me just a second. So here we go, the night 49 yard line. Got to block him to give him enough time to throw it deep. Five seconds to go. Snap back. Holman steps up, throws it towards the end zone. It's going to be. He got it. He got it. He got it. He got it. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Pandemonium on the field! Bashad Pyramid caught it! 51 yards! Touchdown! The Knights have stunned East Carolina! East Carolina's in shock! Oh my goodness! And they shoot the cannon! <laughs> I don't believe it! <laughs> Alright, so I'm sorry that that wasn't the greatest audio quality, but it's there. Man, they were excited. That's basically what my house sounded like at that point, too, because I was screaming at the top of my lungs. If I was in front of a microphone, trust me, it would be clipping as well. So, um, Night Fan, tell us a little bit about your radio show, because you had just mentioned that in that last thing that we were talking about there. Okay, very good. It's a great question. Uh, OrlandoSkyRadio.com. I do a music variety show, and the show runs Thursday night, through Monday night, being K-N-I-G-H-T, the night, and I'm on at night, how appropriate. <laughs> so, yeah, imagine that. 
Night Fan Stan show on at night. Uh, running 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time until midnight. Now, I used to have three hours. We uh, used to go to 11 p.m., and now I'm on until midnight, uh, five days a week. And it's a music variety show. It's Internet radio-based. You can get the app on your phone as well. You can actually plug the your cell phone into a speaker system and play it with uh, speakers from your house. So the sound quality is excellent. And what you need to do, uh, UCF fans, alumni students, even rock and roll fans, music fans, can go to Orlando Sky Radio. That's Sky, S-K-Y, radio.com. There you will see a website, and it has all different types of shows throughout the week, the best of decades, the breakfast show. Uh, there's a Chris Duncan blues show on Sundays, and yours truly, the KFS show at 8 o'clock. You can roam the website, check out the uh, different schedules and music on the uh, on the station. And basically what we do is we have on Thursday nights, it's like top 40 night. Friday nights is country trails night. Saturday is classic rock night where I get my Leonard Skinner journey, Van Halen, Scorpions, metal fix. Sunday night is the KFS cool jazz and blues show. And then Monday night is uh, top 40 night. Again, being I take Tuesday and Wednesday off. And what we do uh, every week, not always every week, but I try every week, is to do a KFS interview around 9.40 p.m. And what we interview is former UCF athletes, current athletes, a lot of students that can promote their clubs, events, sorority, any uh, fundraisers, and we interview students and see why they chose UCF. It goes pretty well. I'd say the interview is about 20 minutes. And we interview any type of UCF, you know, broadcasters like yourself. Eric Kohler is going to be on the show. And we have, I have fun with it. And it's uh, internet radio based. And for now, that's, that's good for me because I have kids. And we all know with kids, they take time and they have you know, events. So it's, it's, it's really working out good. And I'm celebrating actually my third year on orlandoskyradio.com from Knightsville, Florida. All right. right. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I'm, I'm always thinking. I'm always thinking out of the box. Yeah, that's good. People, right. people, we need people that think out of the box for sure. So um, a couple notes here real quick on the game. Um, UCF claimed back-to-back conference titles for the first time in its history. That's right. That's kind of interesting. It hasn't been a long history, but it's been now at the the last few years a very storied history. There were definitely, you know, some things, of course, throughout the years that were pretty exciting. What besides this week? What was the most exciting thing that you have seen from UCF football since you've been watching them? I've been watching. Well, I can tell you, this season was the Houston game, where the quarterback Ward, I believe his name was, clearly Houston won the game. And I'm thinking, okay, here we go. We're going to lose now. You know, we lost to Penn State. We're going to lose to Houston. And the kids fumbled in the end zone. All he had to do was go out of bounds. Fumbled in the end zone. UCF recovers and wins the game. You know, that that had to be one of the top five. Uh, Texas Longhorn game was the inaugural game at Bright House Stadium in 2007. Even though it went right down to the wire, we lost that game. But it was still special being that it was the first home game at Pride House Stadium. I actually kept my uh, a ticket. A lot of games, uh, the Alabama game we won on a field goal back uh, many, many years ago. I, I always say to people, actually Alabama fans, uh, that I come across, whether it be around town or networking events or chamber events, is that we own Alabama. <laughs> it's like, you what? <laughs> I was like, we were on... Suspension, Alabama current was down. I mean, you know, I go, no, 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 we own Alabama. <laughs> and I get a beat. You know, so that was funny. We, we beat them. Uh, the Dante Culpepper years were exceptionally uh, inspiring to me, and as it should be for all UCF fans, because Dante put us on the map and uh, got drafted by the Minnesota Vikings in the uh, first round, I believe it was. So that was something special. But, you know, they're all special. You know, games actually... Um, the Marshall game in the rain a few years ago. I was there. Uh, I was there. Right there. That you was there. an incredible night. <laughs> just uh, 
being in that rain, I think it was yeah. dubbed the monsoon game, correct? It was. Well, I had, I think my feet were wet for a week after that game. Actually, my wife and kids left at halftime and I went to the bookstore yeah. over by uh, Timmy John's and uh, Barnes & Noble. And I stayed and got my UCF poncho and I continued cheering people who I was nuts. <laughs> but I was like, ah, you know, it was, just, it was just rain because, you know, they only, they only cancel or delay a football game due to lightning. So there was no, you know, lightning nearby. So they kept on playing in the rain. Boy, that was uh, a fun time. Yeah, I don't think, to be honest with you, I have ever been that wet with clothes on ever before in my life. I mean, it just rained and rained and rained. I was like, man, this has to be a tropical storm, you know, that they didn't tell us about or whatever. But it, it was, that was insane. I haven't been around that long, and I'll, I'll be, I'm honest with people about that. I, I have not been around UCF football that long, but memories yes. like that, to me, are, are big. You know, games like that, games like, um, you mentioned the Houston game, the Fiesta Bowl last year. You know, there's there's been a lot of games that I have seen. I've only been around UCF football for like the last four or five years. So, well, well my dad always said honesty is the best policy, night fan Andrew. Absolutely, and, right. You're absolutely, and you're a part of the UCF family, just like anyone else. Whether you got on board a few years back, if if somebody got on board last month, I mean. It's all good, and we need people like you to do what you're doing with Nightline Podcast and, and grow the UCF brand. So, amen. I appreciate it. I definitely appreciate it. I appreciate having you on, and I appreciate what you do for, for UCF football, for sure, and for the rest of UCF sports. We are on the UCF Nightline Podcast here um, going to talk more and more about other sports as well, not just football. We started out just talking about football, but we're, we're talking about basketball um, I've been at a lot of the basketball games this year. I've taken some pictures. They're on UCFNightlinePodcast.com up there. I've been trying to write articles about that kind of stuff. The UCF Nightline Podcast is going to change just a little bit. I have to get this out here. Our friend Troy is no longer with the podcast. I'm not going to go oh. into a lot of things about that. I'm not going to say anything bad. I'm just going to say that he's not here anymore. We appreciated everything that he did, but he's not here anymore. We're going to have, you know, it's going to be kind of a totally new thing. We're going to have some guest hosts. We're going to get a few more people on board, not just me, not just Troy. You know, it's going to be multiple people. So we are going to expand this and we're going to give you as much coverage on things as possible. I've put way too much money and my time and and everything else into this and I've you know gotten so many people to actually listen to this and people enjoy it and I'm not going to let it die. So I hope that uh I had to get that out. I you know no hard feelings with Troy just didn't have the time to do it. So we're moving on. So Come on now. Now, now, tell us the truth. He really owes you a Big Mac at McDonald's. Is that what you guys did? You went to McDonald's and you ran out on his tab, and that's that why he's not on the show anymore? Something really like true. that, yeah. <laughs> it was something uh, like I, that. Uh, I thought I read that on the internet. It was right down below TMZ. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great if it was. I mean, that would be that would be great. I'm bummed. Well, you're laughing, so that's good. Laughing is healthy. Remember that. Yeah, it is. You you can't uh, you can't let stuff like that bother you. I was hoping we would be able to report about the bowl game that we're going to, and I have not seen any information about that yet. But we're kind of in the middle of this podcast. I'm sure it's probably out there by now. Um, I was kind of looking on Google News to see if I could find anything, and I have not seen one thing. I'm assuming we're going to the Bitcoin bowl. Bitcoin bowl. Sorry. Um, and I had heard that possibly that was going to be against the Miami Hurricanes. I think that that would be a great opponent um, to have a bowl game against. I think there's some, you know, there's probably a little bit of bad blood there between these teams. Um, just because I think that they came into Bright House Stadium, Bright House Network Stadium at one point a couple of years ago, and, you know, it didn't turn out in UCF's way. So I always think that, that it's, it's good to get 
you know, redemption against a team like that. I wish that we played this team more often anyway in the state of Florida. We need to play all the teams in the state of Florida. We also need to get, the, you know, to play the Gators and, and the uh, Seminoles as well. So, uh, Absolutely. I think uh, for the uh, St. Pete Bowl and St. Pete, you know, I predicted UCF, North Carolina, or UM. I think the Hurricanes would be, from a travel standpoint, a better, sexier pick. As far as fan attendance, you'll get some uh, fans from Miami and Central Florida. So I think the attendance would be greater than, like, say, a North Carolina. Although they had Miami pegged for uh, up to Louisiana with Florida. So, you know, I don't know. And then there was talk about, you know, early on the BYU-UCF rematch in the Miami Beach Bowl. Uh, the only thing that attracts me to Miami Beach is the Miami Beach itself. Maru's Park, I've never been to a football game there, although I can only assume it's like Tropicana, where it's kind of a different setup. So either way, each stadium is not made for football, in my opinion. I'm sure people will agree with me about Tropicana Field. I mean, they do a good job, you know, realigning the field for football, but it's, it's not a football stadium. Actually, it's not even a baseball stadium. So that's that's another topic for another conversation. The Rays need a new <laughs> Yeah, I don't... Or close to Orlando, because, you know, it's kind of not working there, you know, they just need to get a little more fan support, but it's still, it's for, as far as a logistic standpoint, it's the St. Pete Bowl is great, we've been there, now this will be the third time, I believe we've been there twice, uh, we played Rutgers and Ball State uh, a few years back, we beat Ball State, actually, but we lost to Rutgers in the previous bowl game, so if we do go to the St. Pete Bowl, it was called previously the Beefield Brady Bowl, so that would be our third time there in, uh, at that stadium. Yeah, I I don't like it when there's baseball games that are that are played in uh, or football games that are played in baseball stadiums as well. Baseball that's played in football stadiums doesn't work out very well. So it's just the sight lines and everything like that aren't the same. I don't really care. It's just I'm happy to be obviously going to a bowl game this year. You know, it, it can't always be Fiesta Bowls. You know, it it has to be something else besides that. So. Um, I'm kind of bummed no, that the, the football season's ahead. winding down. I mean, I felt like it just got started. So, there's oh, a... Know, one by three quick. What's that? I'm sorry. We missed you. It, the one by pretty quick. I remember when it was just the, the UCF kickoff lunch, and I don't know if you got to attend that. They have it every year at the in August at the CBE Arena. I remember just sitting down with the luncheon, and it was just like yesterday, and the season went bam. It just went boom, right by. Yeah. And uh, here we have it. You know, now the, the bowl selections are coming up, so... You no, know, it's all good. I mean, you know, football, the season does run really quick, opposed to like a baseball or a basketball season. But, you know, those guys take a lot of hard hits out there. So, Speaking uh, of basketball definitely. here, real quick, I need to get this out. Um, UCF played FSU the other night, Saturday actually, yesterday, and lost 96-73 against a really pretty decent FSU team. Next game will be Thursday, and it's at UIC, which is University of Illinois, Chicago. So they will be going up there and doing that. And then next week after that, there will be two games at um, CFE Arena. And I believe, oh, I'm not sure who it is because I don't have it in front of me, but um, conference play is going to start pretty soon. I believe one of them is Florida Atlantic coming up this next week. So, at all. yeah, it's uh, it's definitely going to be basketball season. They're doing quite well compared to, I think, years past. Um, I think there's there's really, you know, something going here um, with players like B.J. Taylor um, and Adonis Henriquez. You know, Casey Wilson, of course, is a senior, but um, Justin McBride did well last week. So he's a big boy. He is a big boy, and so is Stephen Blair or, or Stefan Blair. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, I think it's going to get going. This team needs your support. If you can get out there, it, they need you know everybody's support. So if you can go to a UCF basketball game or or many UCF basketball games out there in uh, the Nightcast Podcast Land, um, mm-hmm. Nightline Podcast. I'm sorry. Uh, please do that. So. I think we're going to wrap it up here really quickly, Night well, Fan Stan. Well, well, absolutely, but don't forget, 407-823-1000. That's 
one triple zero. That's the most famous number, in my opinion, on UCF campus, and that will get you single game and season tickets for any UCF sporting event. So All you right. need to call them up there and tell them that KFS and Knight Van Andrew sent you. All, All right. right. That sounds good. This was episode number 20. Kind of a big deal for me. Um, thank you so much, Night Fan Stan, for being with us. And we will see you next week. Okay, remember, nobody better than UCF students. Every day is a great day to be a UCF fan. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Victory is our cry, B-S-E-T-O-R-Y, two nine or nines will shine.